It's a GTN show. Welcome along. New sponsorship pairings, athletes up to interesting things whilst not racing. Races themselves. These are just a few of the things that we're going to be discussing on today's show. And we have the woman herself, Lucy Charles Barkley, is going to be chatting all about her brand new bike partner. And if all of that isn't enough, we've got our usual features on top of that too. To race or not to race, or should I say to enter a race or not? That is the big question. I don't think I'm alone in speaking for you guys when I say we've had enough of 2020 and we want to move on. It's a new year and we've got new goals and a lot of those do involve entering races. But at the moment, there's just so many questions, aren't there? Do you want to risk entering a race? Can you even train at the moment? Will you be able to travel? Will that event be on? There are so many questions around racing. It becomes a little bit more stressful than it should do. We've seen a lot of race organisers already moving their races that might have been scheduled for the spring over to the autumn. And then there's events from last year that maybe haven't even been rescheduled yet and they're still waiting. And you've also got the problem of the fact that with so many events being rolled over, that a lot of those entries are full because they were from last year, so there's no new slots. So it does pose quite a few problems. And sadly, here at GTN, we don't have a crystal ball just like you guys. And we're also desperate to race, but only want to race when it's safe. Well, we're really envious of New Zealand who've got mass participation events happening pretty much every weekend, it seems, with huge crowds. And they've obviously managed their COVID-19 crisis very well, and they seem to have none in the country. So they are kind of back to what we knew as normal. But that does seem a little way off, especially here in the UK and I think in Europe and the Americas as well. And when it comes to big events, obviously triathlon isn't quite as large as some mass participation events such as marathons. We've seen the LA Marathon that was scheduled for March of this year. It's now been moved to May, but I think that could still be quite ambitious. The London Marathon bit the bullet and having tried to go ahead in October last year, it just moved it another year. So instead of being a March race, that is already going to be in October. But then there's quite a few triathlons when I've just had a look on the Ironman website and the Challenge website at race entries and there's still quite a lot that are open for races in March and April. And I must admit it surprised me, the Oceanside um, event has actually, the 70.3 has sold out, but that's due to happen in March. And then you've got Challenge who have uh, 70.3 in Miami that's still open for entries and Gran Canaria in Spain that's also open. There's a few in Australia and New Zealand and I think the countries themselves will probably control as to whether you can even travel there. So you'd obviously need to check that before you enter. But I am amazed at the moment how the maybe the events aren't quite reflecting where we are in this pandemic still and I know we're desperate to race but do you want to part with your money in this unknown situation? Well like I said I don't have any magic answers but I have got a bit of a checklist of things that I would recommend you go through before sort of choosing and putting your money into an entry fee. Obviously first you want to check that you feel comfortable with it and you're pretty sure it's going to go ahead but that is unknown. As athletes, we're very good at controlling the controllables. So that's what I want to focus on today. And the first thing is to work out how much training can you do? I mean, do you really want to enter an Ironman that's only three months away when your current local swimming pool is closed and you can't do any swim training? So just think about that and maybe it's best if you're going to have to wait to do a last minute entry that you target a shorter distance race that you can just go and have fun and you'll know you'll be able to complete even if you're maybe not at your optimum performance, but you don't have to that fear of trying to run a marathon at the end of a triathlon when your legs just aren't conditioned enough because you've been limited with your training. Look at the amount of travel. I think we've discussed this before, but if you can find an event that's local, that is certainly going to be better for everybody's sake. I don't think I need to explain that one. Um, then how you can adapt your training even. Like if it's maybe you can't swim, look at doing a duathlon, especially in the spring, we might have some duathlons coming up. And then read the small print. I think that point came out last week when we talked about Ironman not refunding those races. Yes, they'll postpone them. If you can't make it the following year, though, you're going to lose your money. So do read the small print. It does tend to be local smaller events that are more likely to give you your money back or a voucher or be able to transfer the entry to somebody else. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything. Um, oh, yeah. And just, I guess, look at the situation and reduce the risk of um, if it's going to be a big entry fee, 
maybe you want to think about doing that next year and if it is something you're going to lose make sure you're okay to be able to lose that money i know none of us want to but make sure it's not really going to affect your life too much so hopefully Fingers crossed, we can start to get excited for racing. And I expect some of you have got entries that have just rolled over from last year and maybe you don't feel ready to race them. I must admit, I forgot that I have two kind of big races that have rolled over, one being a 14K swim and another being a 100K run. So I am hoping that I'll lock down lifts so I can get training for those, but they aren't until the summer, so fingers crossed by then. But anyway, let me know if you've got competitions you've already entered or you're thinking about entering or you're worried about your training, just open the discussion and we can all have a little chat in the comments below. On to try news now. And bike brands such as Trek, Canyon, Look, Pinarello, Giant, Cervelo, the list goes on and on, uh, all names that were suggested as Lucy Charles Barkley's new bike partner. But by now, I'm sure you guys have heard it is Cube. But yes, I have certainly been sat on the edge of my seat. We film our show on a Monday and I have been waiting today for this news. And Lucy has certainly kept us gripped. She even teased us with a picture of Lola. And I think this has been the biggest build up and one of the biggest reactions because she is one of the biggest triathletes. And it's exciting to see some really positive news at this time of year. And I'm even more delighted to say that Lucy has very kindly agreed to have a chat with me about her new signing. Hey Lucy, thanks for your time today. Um, really exciting partnership and we're looking forward to hearing all about it. If you can just start off by explaining how the relationship with Cube came about. Yeah, so it's kind of been in discussion for a little while and it's actually thanks to James Mitchell, the photographer who we've obviously worked with for a few years. He'd been speaking with Cube a little while back and They'd been said that they were really keen to work with me, but wanted to kind of know situations with contracts and things. So we kind of always kept our ears open, I guess, to the potential deal with them. But um, it kind of, James got in contact with my management and then Cube was talking to my management. It kind of just developed and then we obviously got to know the bikes more, did a bit of testing with the bikes and was super happy with that. And after meeting the team quite recently, I was, very sure we'd made the right decision so yeah it was kind of I guess just a good combination of people meeting and having the right conversation so yeah and you know but you teased us with you're gonna be on the fastest bike you know you possible and um you know all of this what is it about the the Arion that you love and you know is there anything that really sort of sold it for you yeah, I mean, I was quite lucky to do some wind tunnel testing where we actually test the bike under Kona conditions um, and it was already faster straight away without optimising certain things for me. Like um, I obviously had the custom bars before, even without them, it was faster. So um, that kind of sold it to me straight away. I've always been someone who is 100% about performance for me. So if I can find those little gains anywhere, then I'm all over it. But Already I just feel like I got on the bike and we hadn't optimised the position, we hadn't done loads of things, but it felt super comfortable. I feel like I could lay down the power really well in the aero position. So even already without kind of doing more and more development, I can already feel like it's going to be a super fast bike. Yeah, and you've mentioned being on a TT bike now with the hope that 2021 is going to be full of racing at some point. And you've mentioned here, now I know you're out in Dubai at the moment training. Is that anything to do with, the, are there any races coming up at the end of this month? I know Dubai used to have it 70.3. Do you, is that still happening? Is that something you've got your sights on? Yeah, I mean, the main reason for the trip out to Dubai was it was pretty much one of the only places where we could go and train and have full access to a natural swimming pool, which we pretty much lacked for the whole of last year. So that was a big appeal was just to get out and be able to swim, obviously. Riding the bike outside here is a little bit nicer than at home, um, so I can put those miles in. We are still waiting to hear if the 70.3 here is going to go ahead. Um, it wasn't really on our plan, but to be honest, at the moment we're like, if a race is happening, we want to be there. So um, if this race is announced that it's going to happen, then we may stay here until that race um, and hope that it goes ahead. 
but yeah to be honest we're just happy to be in a bit of a groove and a role with our training at the moment and keeping our fingers crossed that racing is actually going to start happening this year we, we really hope that it does awesome well it's we're excited to see you race on cube lucy thanks for your time today and yeah fingers crossed for some racing soon yeah, let's keep our fingers crossed. I hope there will be soon. Well, I think the Lucy Charles Barkley announcement has probably overshadowed many of the other athlete announcements over the past week. But this one came out just after I filmed the show last week and it's, it's a new signing to the Erdinger Alcohol Fry team and it's Nikki Bartlett who is delighted and we're delighted to say because she's a big um, friend of GTN that she is joining that team alongside the likes of Patrick Langer, Andreas Dreitz, Andreas Rayler and Danielle Blemhel. So a pretty stellar lineup and great to see um, a Brit and yeah, a friend of our show on that team. Awesome. Um, congratulations, Nikki, and good luck for 2021. Now, not so much of a, an announcement, more the fact that they're not going to be having any more athletes. It's the BMC Pro Tri team. Um, we saw and talked about Emma Pallant leaving that team after being with them for, I think, three or four years, bringing them down to just seven athletes. Well, they have now announced that they're going to keep it at that seven and they're not actually going to be adding to the team. So no exciting news there. Now, another athlete who we always keep a close eye on, I mean, I'm sure you guys do, is Jan Fredeno. And we know he wasn't racing last year, but of course, he wasn't exactly sat around doing nothing. No, he was opening a brand new hotel and cafe in the beautiful city of Girona. And as expected, it looks like a rather classy outfit. And I'm sure it will go down very well in that southern city in Spain, because there's a lot of triathletes and cyclists who, as we know, love their coffee. Guess what? It's picture time. Yes, my favourite part of the show. And to kick us off, we've got this one in from Corey, who um, was well, riding his Scott, but he's actually running in this photo, so ignore that part. But he is in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. It had to be Canada, didn't it? Because it looks pretty darn chilly. Winter brick runs in the north can be, one, cold, two, lonely, especially in the time of Rona and three challenging C.1 being cold. Yeah, I think we get the point. It is very cold, but the fact you're doing brick runs, that's just dedication, isn't it? Well, let's hope you've got a race on the horizon to keep you motivated. Next up, we have Jerick um, from, oh, I don't know why I'm saying this because I put the photo in, but I've forgotten them. From Costa Rica, um, after a training climb, a coconut served for rehydration. Oh, you cannot beat coconut water fresh from the coconut can you for rehydration after training. He does say it's his Merida sculpture at 5,000, but we're definitely getting more of the view of the beautiful forests of Costa Rica. Uh, I reckon if you look closely, you probably see a monkey in there. Anyway, you guys know I love that country. Um, but now we are moving back to the UK for this picture and it's from Madison. And she says, oh, she's actually written it to me, which is very nice. Hi, Heather. Um, that don't know if she reached out to us at GTN and she was really grateful to hear back from us. She's only 13 and was due to do her first triathlon last March before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're alone on that one somehow, Madison. Um, uh, but I've still, I've not done a real one, so I thought I'd post a montage of the ones I've been doing indoors to stay motivated. Well, that is brilliant. I mean, at the age of 13 to be that motivated to be doing your training indoors. And it looks like she's taking it pretty seriously because she's even added rowing into the mix, which I'm imagining is to replace the swim so great stuff there and there's even a little video montage well wonderful to see such a lovely selection of photos if you guys are in New Zealand or Australia and you're actually racing don't be embarrassed please share those because we can live vicariously through you whilst we wait for our season to hopefully kick off in a few months time when things settle down. But whatever you're doing, if you are stuck inside training in your pain cave, share that as well. You can do all of that using the uploader, which is on screen now, or you can also find it in the description below. It's Capcom time, your chance to win a GTN cap. And this was the photo you had to work your magic on last week. It was from the Pan Am Games Mixed Relay. And it was Canada with their hand on their heart. Right, let's have a look at what we've got. Martin Grattan, dick pound, heading off to vaccinate athletes and everyone else can't believe it. Yeah, we'll leave that topic, but um, I see where you're getting at. I think there were a few shocked faces when um, people heard 
that suggestion by the IOC member. Uh, Patrick Rays here says, when you finish a workout only to realize you forgot to put your heart rate strap on. Well, Patrick, I like that comment because it kind of ties in very nicely to a video we have just had that Mark did on training on Phil, which I'll throw to later on to explain. Uh, Amber Kennedy, when you have not raced in a whole year. Oh yeah, that feeling's gonna be good, isn't it? When we get there. Uh, Parker Kurth. Uh, says, this is our runner up by the way. Oh, <laughs> I would love to sing this one to you guys, but I can't do it to you. But just think of Celine Dion singing, near, far, wherever you are, my heart will go on. Yeah, those famous lyrics from that Titanic movie. And obviously Celine Dion being Canadian, I absolutely love that caption. Don't worry, I'm not gonna say I love that song. <laughs> even if I butchered it, but I didn't even try, did I? Right, I am waffling now. The winner, this is what you guys want to know of the GTN cap this week is Tim's Triathlon Journeys. Can you hurry up? We could win this. I love it. Well done, Tim. Get in touch and we will get a GTN cap out to you. And this week, we have a photo of the Australian team, well, three of the Australian mixed relay team from the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast back in 2018. Some confused looking faces there. Imagine the confusion if someone tried to give you a high five right now. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, do leave your suggestions in the comments section below for your chance to win that cap. And that rounds it up for this week. There's still a lot coming out. We've got videos coming out every day, including how to buy a cheap secondhand triathlon bike, which could be perfect right now if you're maybe scanning through eBay or you've got some time on your hands and you want to look at how you can maybe have an investment for this year. We've also got something looking at why you are out of breath after swimming just 100 meters. So keep your eyes peeled for those and maybe you just want a bit of retail therapy at the moment to kind of lift your spirits well do go and check out our gtn shop there's a link on the screen for that one right now and for a bit of entertainment we've got a couple of videos you might like we've got um, a good look at mark's presenter bike it is his canyon speed max of course and i'm sure you guys would love to have a closer look at that one and to top it off we've got oh yeah what happened to training on feel like i mentioned from the caption comp if you're intrigued to know more about that one i would check it out and remember you can subscribe hit the big globe on screen and don't forget to give us a like